Today I'm going to cover tuning your 4L60E for part throttle shifts. So we're going to start out, we're going to go into trans, and we're going to go to shift scheduling, and we're going to bring, see on the left here we got part throttle shift, and then we got full throttle shift speed, and full throttle shift RPM. So today I'm going to focus on part throttle shift tuning and just a little bit of touching on full throttle shifts, how they work together. So I'm going to start off by picking uh, under the part throttle shifts, I'm going to click on normal. Okay, now that we've brought up the chart under part throttle shift speeds normal, we can see along the left, we have the actual shifts of 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and the down shifts of 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, along with the uh, throttle percentage across the top. And all these numbers represent the mile per hour at which the shift will be allowed to occur. So, for example, if we're cruising along at 60 mile an hour and we want to get on it and downshift the third automatically, we're going to have to give it 62% throttle before it will allow that to occur. If you're cruising along and you're at 60 with this the way it currently is and you give it half throttle, it's just going to kind of bog out and stay in fourth and just, you know, you're not going to be, it's just going to bog out. You're not going to get the response you're looking for. So what you can do on these, what this is, is the the speed that it allow that downshift to occur at this amount of throttle percentage. So if you want it to downshift easier with less throttle at a higher speed, then what you're going to need to do on these downshift numbers is raise them. The top is the speed, let's say you're taking off in first year and you're at 25% throttle. At 25% throttle, it's going to upshift to second at 13 mile an hour. So if you want it to hold that first gear longer, you're going to raise those numbers. So basically by raising these numbers, you're going to make the way the 4L60E shifts automatically more aggressive. Whether it be holding the gear longer before it upshifts or downshifting easier at less throttle and quicker. So, what you can do is you could, you could raise this entire chart, but you want to keep in mind that your 100% column needs to match your full throttle shift speed column as well. So, whatever we change here, we need to double check our 100% full throttle columns and copy and paste them in here. Now, Usually what I would do is raise this a little bit and kind of test and dry because a lot of this is going to be to your taste. You know, you're not going to want it anytime you speed up just a little bit cruising along to just downshift from fourth to second and then immediately it's going to shift back up to third if you're going too fast when it downshifts. Like, if you're running 70 mile an hour and you barely give it any gas and it drops to second, it's going to jump the RPMs clear up over 6,000 and then immediately shift back up to third. It's just going to be overworking the transmission for no reason and it's not really what you want. But stock tuning just seems way too conservative and you know if you give it a little bit of gas and you're wanting it to downshift and it doesn't it just kind of bogs out it's just that's one of the downfalls of an automatic I mean you're never going to get it to shift and act like a manual but you can definitely improve it with some part throttle shift tuning so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight this whole graph and I'm going to add take two and I'm just going to add two to the whole thing so now it turned the whole thing red as you can see and then also, what I'd like to do, just to go another step further than that, is be, especially on the downshifts, the 2-1, the 3-2, the 4-3, go ahead and highlight that whole thing. 
and add another one to that. And what that does is increases the mile per hour that you can be traveling along where it'll still allow a downshift. So that's a pretty minor change. You know, on the downshifts total, we added three mile an hour across the board. And on the upshifts, we just added two. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind, your corresponding upshift and your corresponding downshift, like at 12% throttle on the 1-2, we're at 12 mile per hour. On the 2-1 at 12%, we're at 10 mile an hour, so that's okay. We don't want our downshifts to equal or be above our upshift number just because you're going to create some kind of conflict with the ECU. And then the other thing, as the speeds get higher and you're going to want to be careful of them being even too close together so that you don't downshift and then immediately upshift again because you're wrapped out and already close to your full throttle shift RPM. So that's something to keep in mind. But just as a basic adjustment, I went ahead and added two to the up, all the upshifts and then another one to the downshifts, so a total of three on the upshifts. Now, a lot of times from experience what I'll see is the middle range throttles, especially on the 4.3 and the 3.2, from say 31% to 75%, usually they need a little more. So I'll go ahead and add another one to that. And just double check, make sure your corresponding cells, you don't have any conflict, and we don't. Like this, the spread between the two gets more as the mile per hour go up, so like I say, because you don't want an immediate downshift and immediate back upshift because you've already hit the target RPM. So we've made, just from that, we've made a minor improvement. And what I would do is I would drive and just kind of test some of the speeds and the downshifts, particularly the downshifting. You're going to kind of want to drive and see if it fits your taste. And if you're giving it more throttle than what you'd like to to have to get it to downshift, then what you're going to do is raise these numbers in the corresponding cells and just, again, make sure you don't pass up the matching cell on the upshift side to cause any kind of conflict. And you can get the 4L60E to shift pretty well on your part throttle driving to make it a little more aggressive so when you're you're not bogging down or taking a really having to stand on it to get it to downshift again you know you're gonna it's gonna take some trial and error and experimentation to uh, fit your driving taste and get it so it's not crazy upshift and downshifting all the time with every little bit of a throttle but at the same time not bogging down when you get on it and not downshifting the way you want so from here what I would do is go ahead and copy that into the other normal into the um, cruise it's going to match go ahead and copy it into there and copy that into the hot table as well because they're the, they're identical I just go ahead and copy all three of those to match and then the other thing we want to look at is take our hundred percent column and copy that into our full throttle shifting over here in the middle. Go ahead and copy and paste that in there so that we don't have any conflict where our full throttle shifting is saying one thing and our part throttle shifting at 100% throttle which is the same they should equal each other. So a lot of times when people are tuning, they're going to go ahead and address the wide open throttle, shift speed and RPM initially. So this would already be set. So a lot of times these numbers, especially if you have a cam or some kind of an aggressive setup, you're going to, these are going to be higher than your part throttle anyway. So the main thing here is make sure that when you do your part throttle shift scheduling, you make sure your 100% column matches your wide open throttle shifting. So again, a lot of people, and then you're going to go ahead and copy that into your performance and hot tables as well. Make them all match. So 
again, a lot of people address the full throttle shifting because that's obvious and something that you want to you want your full throttle shifts to be the way you want and where at the RPM you want, but they don't spend a lot of time on the part throttle shifting where this is where you know it's not these are things that aren't going to show up on the dyno so if you pay for a dyno tune they may not even do much with this at all but as far as your enjoyment of driving it one of the knocks on the 4L60E you know it's just a slush box so you get a stall converter and then it doesn't shift at part throttle and downshift the way you want it's just going to bog around and it's not going to be Fun, as fun to drive as you can make it be. You know, again, you're never going to make it a manual transmission, but you can make it a lot more enjoyable to drive if you tune this part throttle shifting to downshift the way you want it to. And then just always make sure you don't have a conflict between the upshift and the downshift. The downshift speed needs to be lower than the corresponding upshift, and that your 100% column needs to match your full throttle column. And then it'll just take some trial and error driving it and tuning it to your taste and you can get it to be a lot more enjoyable to drive.